Hello, everyone. Welcome to Friday. I'm Katie WI7YL here for Ham Radio Outlet. Welcome to our Shack Chat here in my shack. It's so great to uh, join everybody here. It is June 5th. And if you're watching on a rerun, thanks for logging in after the fact and watching. Thanks for all of you that are here live today on YouTube and Facebook. Don't forget, we've got a Shack Chat group now for our Shack Chat shout outs and more. And look at, we've got our first DXs in the room today. Hello, Kara. And we've got Springfield, Missouri is in the room. There's my friend Dan in California. Let me grab my Dan. There he is, KF6 Triple H. And let's see who else. Oh, Edwin Cortez is here. Hello, Edwin. And. Uh, oh, and there's Michael, another one of our top fans and regulars. Thanks so much, everybody, for being with us here today. Very excited. There's a lot of neat things happening. And I tell you what, I want to make sure you stay tuned to our pages later today because I've got a special video coming out later. I'm not going to tell you about it quite yet, but it's really exciting stuff. <laughs> All right. Cape Cod is here. And who else is here today? Oh, there's Mark. Hi, Mark. Hey, Mark. <laughs> Welcome. Nice to see you, Mark. And uh, there's Alan. Well, today again is June 5th. And um, there's a couple announcements I wanted to make first before bringing on our special guest. First one is, if you hadn't seen the news yet, um, uh, it came out from Mark Brown, N4BCD, who is the chairman of the Huntsville Ham Fest. And very sorry to report that the Huntsville Ham Fest has been canceled for this year. Um, just like so many other ham fests and big conventions. Um, I'm sure it was a very difficult decision on their part, but um, it has been made official that the Huntsville Ham Fest will not be happening this year. And um, just to let everyone know that um, any online ticket purchases will be credited to your PayPal accounts. And apparently the embassy hotel reservations will be automatically canceled. But if you just check out their website, hamfest.org, I'm sure you'll be able to check up on any recent news on that particular topic. And so obviously we're sad about that, but totally understand. And this is a very tough year for ham fest and conventions alike. And uh, I, Feel, I feel their pain because it's such a tough decision when you are one of the organizers. And uh, <laughs> Ray's popping in, noticing who should or shouldn't be working. There's Charles. Hi, Charles. And Jonathan's here. Okay, so the other big announcement I wanted to make is actually, it's really, I just wanted to give a special, a special shout out to my friend Joe Eisenberg, K0NEB. Now, I'm not sure if you guys saw the news on the AWRL page a couple days ago, but he has been named as another recipient for the Yasme Excellence Award. Yay, Joe! That's awesome. So let me just read this off real quick. The Yasme Foundation recognized him for his contributions to amateur radio through his kit building seminars as seen at the Dayton Hamvention and other ham gatherings. He is also the editor of the kit building column for CQ magazine. Joe exemplifies the give back and self teaching spirit of ham radio, especially in training youngsters. The foundation said during uh, the granting of this award. And additionally, which was not part of the YASME Award, but um, during the pandemic right now, Joe has been using his own 3D printer. It's been running 24 hours a day, and he has been creating the um, masks, the, um, what do you call those, the, uh, uh, the protective face shields for the first responders in his community of Lincoln, Nebraska. And I have to say, Joe has been um, probably averaging about six shields a day. And every couple of days or so, he visits his local fire station and drops a new batch off for them. And um, since everything's been happening with that, he has just had his 3D printer running nonstop. And what uh, what a great contribution he's able to make to his community. So well done, Joe. Thanks for all you do for ham radio and for your local community. I just thought, you know, we always like to share the good stuff that's happening. <laughs> and, uh, and again, Joe is one of those people that really, um, he does so much for ham radio and I really feel lucky to call him one of my friends. Okay. Now let's get back to our topic of field day. With that, I am going to oh, let me bring in my friend, Chip Margelli, K7JA. Welcome to the show, Chip. 
Hey, good morning and good morning all around the world. Um, it's great to be here talking to you from Southern California, where in the truest tradition of field day, it's raining. Of so, course. <laughs> field day, when the rain stops, what happens next? The mosquitoes. And oh, then, yuck. When the clouds go away and the sun comes out, the locusts. And, <laughs> So it's got to be field day season, and uh, we're we're rare, raring to go out here. It's going to be a different field day this year, to be sure, with everything that's going on. But you know, it's uh, uh, get your uh, get your T-shirt that says "Field Day Matters" because that's that's the truth. <laughs> that's for sure. Oh my goodness. Well, you know that doesn't really sound very appealing um, with what you have going on there. But of course, um, for those of you that follow me on Facebook on my WI7YL page, you might have seen some videos that I posted last night of our weather. We had this amazing system come through, and we got the we got so much hail. And I went out and did some uh, checking of the house this morning, and. I was already kind of thinking I wanted to repaint the back of the house. Well, now we really have to because it just hammered the whole back of the house. But thankfully, the important stuff is fine. Meaning, of course, the towers and antennas. We uh, Those are built to last and no problems there. But um, the house is definitely dinged up. But around here, because of getting hail so frequently this time of the year, which we've had during field day as well, we don't really paint our houses until like September or October. So we got to wait through, <laughs> wait for all of the storms to be done until we can embark on that. Katie, what's with those clouds? Yeah, exactly. Oh, Shirley Rafferty says, hi, Chip. <laughs> Yay. Well, I know you've got a great presentation for us today and let's dive in. And if someone asks some questions along the way, we'll see what we can do. But let me share your screen here. Ta-da. Ta -da. All right. Here we are. Well, yes, it's field day season, that's for sure. And uh, uh, if I can just take a second also, Katie, I, I want to give another shout out to Joe Eisenberg there. Yeah. Uh, Joe actually made me a mask, and I, I got it, and I was really surprised, and this is great, and I put it on, and I had had to get on the email, hey, Joe, uh, this mask covers my entire face, and he came back, and he said, precisely. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> you get no respect, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Mr. Margelli, are you ready for field day? Yeah, uh, are, are you ever ready for field day? I don't know, but here we go. All uh, right. Important disclosure, besides the disclosure that, yes, I do work for Ham Radio Outlet. Proud to say that. Uh, I am indeed a field day junkie, and, it's, you know, it's a character flaw. I will, I freely admit it. Uh, <laughs> it goes without saying that I built a whole lot of stations in a big hurry. One year, uh, my local radio club uh, asked me uh, if I would be interested in doing the VHF station. And I go, the VHF station. Uh, okay, I'll do the VHF station. And as you can see in the picture, okay, what do we have here? We got seven elements on six. We got three elements on six. We got four elements on two. We've got a dual band vertical. We've got a, another five element beam for two meters. We've got a, a Moxon uh, for uh, 440 for satellite. We've got a 220 vertical and uh, Old Glory in there to boot. So, Good uh, grief. <laughs> hey, Joe just popped in here and says, ha, ha, ha. So, hi, Joe, for watching. <laughs> Joe's watching us. <laughs> I'm, I'm busted. And uh, just as uh, just as Dwayne says, uh, field day isn't a matter of life and death. It is much, much more important. So That's right. Why do, we do this? why do we go through the mosquitoes and the locusts and the floods and the rain and, and the, the crummy food? It's, it's because of this. And, of course, this is happening out here in Southern California. We had a a 5.5 the other day, which is not that big, but it happened in the Ridgecrest area, which mm -hmm. had, had the big one a few months back. And believe me, if there's a 2.1, they feel it now. They are hypersensitive. Right. And, and here in Ham Radio, when all else fails, we're the ones that people talk to because we're going to be needed one of these days. So uh, just yeah. horrible disasters come out and we're the only ones that can put the comms in play to make it all happen. So, how ready are you? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Have you built and tested your antennas? It's three weeks away, people. Now would be a good time. Have you set up uh, all the equipment and tested them as a system? 
now would be a good time. And most importantly here, if, you, if you're going to use a logging computer, have you tested that out as a system with the radio? Do you have the new versions of N1MM or N3FJP? Uh, because they have recently been modified to right. accommodate the rules. This The rules changes this year, which allow 1D stations at home to work 1D stations uh, without having the uh, National Guard come out. and uh, Right. And <laughs> So. So that's a really good point because, you know, normally a lot of times you don't want to update your software just before a major contest or operating event. But this is one of those times you actually do want to make sure you get it updated. You do. And it's three weeks out. So this is a perfect time to check it now, make sure it's playing and then, uh, you know, make make up a, you know, start a contest, a dummy contest and just start logging people and then save it as, you know, field day test. And then. Right. Time for the event. You just do a, a another file that is the real field day file. Sounds now, good. There, there are some things um, that you got to be careful of. It worked last year. Uh, uh that just does not cut <laughs> it off field day. You need to configure everything that you do for quick deployment in the field. You don't want to be sitting there drilling holes and 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 building things on the site. It's just it's just not. It's just not right. This is, after all, an emergency exercise, and you're not right. going to be fabricating during a, an emergency. And right. once again, test your stuff. Um, number one, it worked last year. Those are famous last words on field day, to be sure. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Well, the the van <laughs> put the stuff in worked last year. Um, let me see who's that working on that thing. Edsel <laughs> Murphy came up with that one. The generator. Mm -hmm. Why is it always the generator? It worked last year. Please turn it over. Change the oil. Maybe change the plug. At least check the plug. Um, Got to do it. Uh, did you store it properly? Uh, <laughs> sometimes you did. Sometimes <laughs> old, old uh, Homer there didn't quite keep it under... Uh, uh, under a roof, uh, you could be into trouble. And of course, what happens that's going on when you pull the starter on field day? Uh oh, you get <laughs> surprise. Come on, you, you have been there. Yeah, you saw the smoke, you saw the fire. Yeah, you've been there. Yep. Um, what's the solution? Well, you can always have batteries, those are a nice alternative, and they can do a lot of good things for you. These new uh, lithium iron. Uh, phosphate batteries um, are, are really amazing. They, for one quarter the weight, they have the same capacity as the traditional sealed uh, lead acid batteries. Boy, I was I was skeptical when I first saw these things, and uh, uh, yeah, I'm a believer now. I have uh, several of these I take out, even though we do have generator power. If something happens, um, I can switch over instantly to the um, to the, the batteries and, you know, if I have to go into like a computer or something that its battery isn't working or something like that, I can always use an inverter for a few minutes until the Jenny comes back on. But you can run full goo with these things. BioNO is a company that makes a lot of really, really great batteries. Um, they uh, they have them in all sizes from three, four, five amps to uh, 45, 50, 60 amps, say uh, even more. And, um, uh, looking for that 100-point uh, uh, bonus uh, for using solar power. They have solar power uh, uh, systems, too. Right. And they can keep you on the air, uh, get you on the air, and, and maintain everything, and, and really, really do great. And, and you can run full power. We uh, do, as Katie knows, we do Thanksgiving out here on the beach every year in Southern California. And we set up, and we have bio and batteries, and we just... We used to run 15 or 20 watts, but now with these things, they just hold voltage so well. We just, we run the goo. Yeah. Hey, I got a quick question going back to the generator. Um, Mark is asking, does it matter what type of a generator? Like, can you pick one up from Harbor Freight? Um, if Harbor Freight has any. <laughs> right. I think he's just using that as an example. Like, does it, you know, do you need some super duper um, generator or pretty much anything will do? You want to know the truth. Um, obviously, uh, there are two classes of generators. There mm -hmm. is the traditional uh, uh, 
generator, the big bum, 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 bum. Right. Uh, work fine. And then there is the more modern design, the uh, inverter types. And um, uh, I have, I have got a, a Westinghouse, which is a sort of a clone of uh, the Honda 2000i and the 3000, which are very popular, the, the Hondas are. Um, we have at our winter field day operation from W6ZE used a 3500 watt Predator inverter uh, generator from Harbor Freight. Yep. And boy, am I impressed. Um, that thing is quiet. It is very stingy on the gas. It's quiet for RF, and it it runs everything. And that would so, be nice. <laughs> quiet generator is something we don't have for our field day, which is why we have like a hundred foot long, you know, electrical cord to put the generator way far away from our operating station. <laughs> yeah, but but I I have to say that I was very impressed with the Harbor Freight uh, inverter generators there, uh, um, and I I can't recommend it uh, enough. Um, Harbor Freight or again the Hondas, uh, right. there are several like that, and uh, they work. They work really great. In fact, some of the Hondas, uh, uh, the Honda generators in particular, and some others uh, allow you to gang them so that you can uh, get double the output uh, current capability. They have kits to allow you to do that. And right. so we, uh, we run a couple of those uh, typically at our field day site every year. Um, and they, they work great. And they're, again, they're stingy on gas. Um, yep. And they're lightweight. I mean, you can actually carry these things around. I also have one of the big uh, uh, traditional generators, and it's on wheels, so that yep. we can wheel it around. So you can go either way. But uh, boy, uh, you, it's a good question that was asked there, and uh, yeah, you can go for it. Cool. Well, thank you for that. Sorry. Yeah, this Here, is Gordo WB six NOA uh, holding court on uh, on the beach at our uh, yep. Thanksgiving operation. Now. This is quick deployment. You need to organize your gear as best you can. And, and everybody's solution is going to be different depending on you know, what you're responsible for at your particular operation. Uh, I picked up a Pelican case some time ago because uh, I've been known to get on an airplane for field day or something else. And I wanted to have something <laughs> to really protect uh, my equipment. And so a uh, Pelican case can be a, a big help, and there are multiple layers that you can utilize. On the mm -hmm. top layer here, I, you can see I've got my bencher paddle, and you see some power cords uh, there on the right side, and computer cables and DC cable on the upper part, and that's on the uh, between the the lid, the lid's foam, and the top layer of foam that covers the radio. In this case, it's a TS five ninety SG uh, Kenwood radio, and I've got the uh, PowerWorks power supply there on the right side to power it. And, uh, and the Pelican case, of course, lets you cut out uh, form-fitting uh, outlines for the radio and other equipment. So that works really well. Um, always, if you've stored it for some time and haven't used it, you got to set it up. And um, so there we got the power supply, the radio, and the gear paddle. No, no microphone. I mean, come on, let's be careful about <laughs> Let's be careful about this coronavirus thing. We don't want to be spewing too many germs here. So CW only, right? Yeah, you're just finding an excuse to be only CW. <laughs> okay, <mea culpa. laughs> we, we know your secret. <laughs> there, are, there are lots of radios that fit into this genre of size and performance that really, really play uh, well, uh, allow you to pack them well and uh, can make it to and from the field day site easily. ICOM 7300, of course, is wildly popular, great radio. There's the 590 SG, uh, works very well. It's a great CW radio. And all these radios are also very easy for interfacing for uh, FT8 and other digital modes. Yesu, Yesu has got several in this size. Uh, the 991, the 450D is a little smaller. You can even go to smaller than that, the FT891, uh, which is a very compact radio. But I tell you what, you put that thing on the air on field day, people are going to hear you and you're going to hear them. Uh, there are lots of lots of radios that are available these right. days into a Pelican case, um, including for the satellite station, the ICOM 9700, the companion to the 7300. So two Pelican cases, a couple of uh, radios like this, uh, and uh, what's not to like. 
And of course, headphones, you got to have the right kinds of headphones. The, uh, the Hyo Pro 7s and, and headphones like that use pressure on the ear to uh, block out noise. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, there are some active noise canceling headphones out, obviously, by Bose and others. The problem on field day is there's no ground to speak of, or not, not one that you've had time to troubleshoot. And so it's really easy for boom, 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 to get everywhere. But right. the passive noise reduction like uh, the Pro 7s here uh, worked really well. We used uh, headphones like this out uh, in the Pacific on a D expedition a few years ago. And every night when it'd be pouring rain, you, you couldn't hear yourself talk, but there was absolutely no noise on the receiver side. So that was wow. great. And in this, in this year of coronavirus, Make sure you have one of these for each operator. Put the call sign on the top, uh, you know, W2XYZ, W2ABC. Hmm. Everybody's got to have their own headphones because we want to. you want to be healthy two weeks after the event. <clears throat> right. <laughs> then, of course, in getting ready, you've got to prep your antennas. And a lot of them you can build and transport in fully assembled status like these two meter beams that I've got here. Don't forget to mount the ballon in advance. So all you have to do is hook up your coax and then look at them and look at them again. Do you have all of the hardware, uh, the tools that you might need to mount them on your mast, nut drivers, wrenches, whatever that might be um, to get on the air. I mean, there are lots of very compact beams that deploy quickly. Uh, the, the high gain TH2 is a favorite of mine. Uh, yep. The two halves of the elements break off and are then transportable size each. So you've got four uh, element halves and the boom, tape them together, and they all fit on top of our uh, Ford Escape. And so that's a real uh, easy solution. And a two element Yagi has the most dB gain per element of any antenna out there. So it's a good way to start. Uh, Cushcraft rotary dipole D3 and the A3S are popular. It's a little more little more work, but uh, instead of uh, four element halves, you have six on the A3, but a lot of de-expeditions over the years have used the A3S. Mm -hmm. uh, puts out a good signal and it's, it's easy to assemble. <clears throat> For the VHS station, of course, there are lots of great designs out there. M squared has three element beams for two meters and for six meters. You see them here. Um, I, I'm not quite sure what Mike Stahl at M squared did on that uh, 6M3SS, but it really honks. I was very impressed with how it plays. Uh, the first yeah. time, whoa, this thing is is head and shoulders <laughs> of that size. It's, it's very well done and it goes together quickly. Of course, the rest of your VHF station probably is going to have to cover FM, and there are lots of great verticals available from Comet, Diamond, Diamond and Tram, and MFJ and others. They're uh, they're all uh, very important, and and these are. These are free points. The VHF station is a free station. So right. these are free points, and there's a great way to get uh, your vertically polarized uh, situation taken care of right here with the verticals. And for the lower bands, dipoles, dipoles, dipoles. There are lots of dipole kits available there. and They're, they're pre-tuned by the manufacturer, having been tested in the field. You need to test it yourself to make sure that everything is hunky-dory. But my gosh, uh, Alpha Delta Buckmaster, MFJ Radio, Oasis Radio works. These things are all very well thought out, very, uh, very good antennas for getting on the air quickly. And each one, each manufacturer has got their own little slant on how they want to do things. You know, some people are into extended double zeps or, right. or center fed or end fed antennas. And so it's, it's great fun to peruse the various um, uh, manufacturer sites and see what's available. Right. Now, a favorite thing with me, if you've bought an antenna, is what? How can you make it go together quickly? My favorite thing is wing nuts. Wing nuts. Make make it so that you don't have to make see if you got the red nut driver or the green nut driver or the yellow nut driver or the brown nut driver. Right. Uh, just have the wing nuts there, and uh, you know it's quick assembly and very high cool factor. Absolutely. Any, any antenna with a wing nuts is a good antenna. And you can use these for putting the boom together. You can use it for the boom to mast U-bolt. Uh, U-bolts can show up everywhere. You see it here holding the gamma match in place. And then the uh, the, the two on the left center there are, are for the U-bolt that holds the antenna. And the two on the right side are for the boom splice. So uh, 
good antennas love wing nuts. Those are great. And then when you're assembling in the field, color code every element. So you yes. know where the sliding lengths go together. That's the red element. The, the red tape also goes on the boom to signify which uh, position on the boom is the red element. This just cuts down so much time and guesswork. And right. So well, I know we did that when you came, when you guys came out here for field day and that ever since you taught us that trick, we've been using it ever since. Cause you aren't kidding. It really does make life so much easier. <laughs> you know, and, and your, your head is, is fried. I mean, literally right. fried from the heat and fried from doing too much and you're hot and, and, and not thinking right. And right. This, a lot of the uncertainty out of it. Um, testing in advance is important too. I've got a chimney mount, uh, uh, which will take up to a six meter beam. Anything bigger might be a little dicey, but uh, <laughs> it's great for testing Yaggies to make sure that the the uh, everything is the way it ought to be. And it's a great test stand. If you've got, got something bigger, this is a picture of me in a local schoolyard. And uh, how do you emulate a, a 20 meter beam that's got to be up in the sky? Well, you can't, you can't just hold it up because you're, you know, six feet above the ground, the mutual coupling to between the, the array and the ground is going to shift the frequency and the impedance, mm -hmm. but if you point the driven uh, point, the antenna straight up, then uh, the driven element is roughly seeing what it's going to see when it's in the sky. Cause the reflector is underneath it. Now to be even more rigorous, you could put a, a wooden chair or something uh, down and then put the uh, arse end of the boom on that. And that is even a better, replication of what this beam sees in the sky. I have very, very reliable uh, results by tuning and verifying an antenna just like this, uh, pointing it at the sky uh, compared to when it's up, uh, say, a half or three quarter wavelength. So this is a right. great point. Wow. Can I check the SWR? Super cool. <laughs> and, uh, coax. Coax. Oh, yeah. Coax. Check coax. <laughs> or field day. Don't get out to the site. And well, this worked last year. <laughs> Don't say that to me. <laughs> and count all the jumper cables you're going to need between your bandpass filters and the radio and preamps for VHF and all this stuff. Count and inventory and organize your jumper cables and uh, make sure you've got, uh, if you need N pieces of coax, make sure you have N plus three pieces of coax for field day. We right. have at HRO, of course, we've got uh, ABR cable experts, Davis RF, JSC, and Times Microwave. Yep. All very high quality stuff. Works great. Coil it properly. Coil it hand over hand, not rope, you know, like you do with a cheap rope. Do it right. Hand and your elbow. That is a terrible way. It's going to guarantee a tangle. Hand over hand coiling is the way that it. Uh, will come out nice and then you just roll it out hand over hand and you'll not have a kink. You'll not, it'll be perfectly organized when you're coiling it. Here's a neat little trip tick that trick. You, uh, <laughs> you do your tape and then at the very end of it, you fold it over. How many times have you just tape, tape, tape and uh, whack it down. And then when you get out to the site, Hey, there's no end to this co this cape, this tape. I can't find it anywhere. And you just, you go nuts. But if yep. you fold, and, and leave a leave a little Irish pennant there. Leave a leave a, a tab on there. You'll find it right away and get the get right. The tape. Or heaven forbid, you take your pocket knife out to cut the tape off, and then you cut your coax. So, yeah, oops. <laughs> Not yeah. that I've ever done that before. No, never, no, no. no. <laughs> and, and don't forget the tweenies. Yep. Uh, these these are connectors that go between this and that. So I call them tweenies. And make sure you got your barrel connectors and, and UHF to N, BNC to UHF or right angles or whatever you need. Don't forget the tweenies. Count them, organize them, have them all in one place. Make sure yep. you've got N plus three. Yep. yep. And of course, eventually, you know, you've got, you got to commit to this thing. You, you got to make it go. So uh, they're important list when you're getting down to the wire. Yep. Uh, make a complete list of each station's needs and then make yourself a Friday load list for setup or Thursday night uh, out here on the West mm -hmm. coast. Um, antennas and tools are what you need on Friday. And then a Saturday load list, which is radios, power supplies and things like that. And then of course, when you get done with those two lists, you have to 
hope and pray that Friday load plus Saturday load does not exceed the cubic feet of packing space available in your, right. uh, it usually <laughs> exceeds by about 25%. Right. Which means you have to make another trip. <laughs> you know, which means you have to bring a second car. My mini right. Cooper has had so much crap thrown into it. <laughs> <laughs> Poor mini. <laughs> um, so when, when you've got all your all your lists and everything organized, lay it out. When you're just before you load it, lay it out and check your inventory list. Uh, I've got uh, what seven of my rocket launchers there, about 150 feet of the stackable military mast, uh, individual Yaggies here, uh, all taped together uh, uh, item by item. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff there. And of course, by some miracle of packing, it all goes right on top of the vehicle, and yeah, it fits. Why? Because it has to fit. Right. And then you get it out, and, and the car explodes, and all this stuff <laughs> hits the ground, and you need to have it in a central spot, not on the grass, because things start disappearing into the grass. Right. So, and so you can, if you can, if you've got a nice flat place like this, preferably with a sheet underneath it, or in this case, the slab of concrete, uh, assemble on that because grass eats nuts and bolts and washers, especially washers. Mm -hmm. up there, this is up WY7FD Field Day on top of Warren Peak in northeastern Wyoming. Uh, what's yep. those clouds? In the old nuclear reactor site. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wasn't that a Nike site or something? Yeah. Was, yeah. No, not a Nike site. It was the first portable nuclear radar facility. Oh, that's right. I remember that. The Air Force Base. Yep. Yeah, nuclear powered radar. Yep. Now, while you're building antennas, you, you need to get your local uh, youth group that has volunteered to help you out to yeah. set up your operating tent. Uh, <laughs> and they've trained for this. Leave them alone. Just right. leave them alone. Uh, <laughs> what, you didn't arrange for one of these? Oh, gee whiz. Hard luck, sir. Hard luck. <laughs> Maybe next year. I mean, this is a small version of W3AOs, but boy, this sure was nice. And, and those kids from Crook County Emergency were just fantastic and there's uh there's bill w1hij from ham radio outlet anaheim with a big grin on his face uh yep he walked in here and he said wow this is cool right <laughs> and then it, it is it's time to boogie one two three you know three two one cq field day cq field day charlie oscar zero uncle sam there's bill on the right side and me on the left uh, we're operating from uh, about 70 miles east of havana uh, with the uh, Federación de Radio Aficionados de Cuba a few years ago, the first uh, joint Cuban-American field day operation. And uh, Neat. Boy, we had a good time down there. Those guys are eager field day guys. And they, oh, they, yeah. know to, they know how to make it happen down there. Um, make sure you've got the right crew. Never underestimate the capabilities of female voice to generate 150 an hour. That's right. Go girls. <laughs> Yeah, but girls and boys got to be careful at the field day site. All this outside air leads to romance. And you know, <laughs> if somebody comes seeking boons, you, your, your rate is definitely going to suffer. So be prepared <laughs> and be strong. <clears throat> <laughs> Always, I don't care where you are, bring a jacket for the night shift. It's going to yeah. get cold. My, my face is actually frozen in this picture. I haven't moved in 20 minutes because it's, it's, <laughs> it's frozen. And uh, also, in your operations planning, no, you can't all break for dinner at the same time. I don't care how good the steaks are. You have <laughs> to beg with people. It's just you got to do it. <clears throat> um, there are other distractions. Sometimes you have visitors show up and hang from your coax. This was in, <laughs> this was in Cuba also. This guy jumped and said, hi, what you got for me? And so, FR0GGY, uh, yes, I have you in the log, one delta DX. Thank you. <laughs> cute little guy that is great it uh, the event is over time to take it down now oh, yeah. everybody is tired you're fried be careful go slowly take your time it'll get mm -hmm. done but make sure you've got lots of bodies around to spot for you and make sure that things are hunky door i'm not actually holding that up it's sitting right. on the ladder but boy it's take your time uh, you probably got a flag up there. We always have pirate flags besides everything else, uh, besides Old Glory. And uh, right. make sure that you strike the colors with all due dignity. Um, <clears throat> did I say something about coiling? Are we going back to this again? <laughs> even on 
Palm Sunday, coil the coax or suffer the consequences you will. It's all done. Take it. It's all down. It's time to load into your limousine and head for your post field day dinner. <laughs> 1935 truck in Cuba. Neat. Our tired but happy field day crew and uh, uh, whatever your vehicle is, uh, a good time awaits you, I'm sure. Get done with dinner. You start dreaming about next year. What about next year? Never again. Yeah. <laughs> pirate flag of course but next year it will seem like a better idea a few weeks after this it does isn't that for sure <laughs> in in wrapping things up here again be prepared and above all have fun i mean it's it's supposed to be fun it's an exercise that is supposed to be fun so that you enjoy the exercise and learn right. something from it. along the way you know <laughs> yeah. your infrastructure you pull off something like this she's probably not going to do it next year so <laughs> Re rethink how you use your uh, your workers there. Uh, above all, you know, listen to what your safety officer is saying during that 100 bonus point lecture. Right. Be absolutely certain to observe all safety procedures. Uh, don't be an idiot, folks. Those are push up masts, <laughs> not tilt up masts. If you try to tilt it up, this is going to happen. Guaranteed. <laughs> Uh, watch uh -oh. out for dietary malpractice. Uh, <laughs> if you do a chili cook off, yeah, you're going to have a blazing saddles on your hands here, and and you're intense. What what good could come of that? Nothing. <laughs> what could go wrong? <laughs> Be careful in advance. If you know somebody's got uh, dyslexia, make sure they go to the right place. It's it's a G O T A station. You idiot. <laughs> Um, and, and just a practical bit of advice in terms of getting prepared in the business aspect of this, um, uh, don't, don't order on Wednesday before field day. If you need to get something, right. coax and things like that, uh, you know, HRO is quick, but the old pony express is very uncertain right now. Uh, stock levels that are already getting hit hard in advance of field day may, uh, may be because suppliers haven't been able to get their workers in and get uh, get in uh, product out the door so uh, order early and uh, you know just make sure that you're not left without equipment because we are living in uncertain times right things are just not as they always are this is good advice in any field day year but especially this year and when all said and done get out there kick butt have a great time on field day. Uh, how could you not? It's what it's all about. It's ham radio. This is what we do. And right. with that, I'm going to sign this off and we'll get it back to Katie. K7. All right. Well, here we are. That was awesome, Chip. Thanks so much. And a lot of fun and lots of comments rolling through the uh, chats. I uh, couldn't quite keep up with all of them. Oh, I think I knocked my camera over. I was laughing and goofing around back here. But um, Bill WZ1L uh, just popped in with a question for you. It says, it says, yeah, maybe if I could, I'm not sure if it all, if it's a long one. So I'll see if I can put it. He says, you head down to field day site on Friday night to set up a few tents, take a dinner break and a microburst comes through. Now, we um, don't know it. We don't know anything about that, do we? <laughs> but let me finish here. It says, uh, you know, you return to devastation and bent tent poles. Do you toss your hands up in the air and just operate from the radio club with a generator? He says they've run field day from the radio club clubhouse last three years. So, you know, we've had some experience like that while you were here in Wyoming. What if what? we were up on top of Warren Peak and we we're uh, uh, enjoying a beautiful day. And then here come here it comes. Uh, what's with these clouds? And right. it was clouds, <laughs> it was clouds and it's it's just we're, we're eating dinner and it's dead still it's beautiful and then we all looked at each other and we went <laughs> and where's where's that coming from and in about 30 seconds we had 60 mile an hour winds hitting us um that increased to 85 sustained overnight yeah uh, <laughs> wy7fd and i saw what was happening we scampered up this little knoll where we had an hf beam installed right. This unbendable military mast. I'm holding on to it. Dwayne's holding on to a rope, trying to make sure that it's secure. And the mast 
in my hand started sizzling. Yeah. <laughs> and it sure enough, that, that heavy military mask got bent over. Uh, and, but what do you do? You fix it. We, yeah, we, but first, but first, you jump in all the vehicles and zip like heck to get off the mountain. <laughs> get out of danger. You can put it together. Saturday morning, yeah. all but one of our antennas was down in some way. Right. Tower came over, mass bent, uh, just blew to pieces, and in four hours we had it rebuilt. Why? Well, we had practice. We know where everything went. Right. We had extras. We had uh, extra mast sections that we could replace, and we had a whole lot of know-how. And uh, so I say, you rebuild the station. You well, re- you know, I when that happened to us that year, I know initially everybody was kind of frustrated, of course, because, you know, you have this massive storm. You have to run back to our house. We all hunkered down and waited it out. Went back in the morning. We had fog and, you know, trying to put everything back together. But then you're then and then you're like, well, you know what? That's what the whole point of field day is, is is setting up and and doing it if it has to be sort of at the last minute, but being prepared and having everything you need. If you have to put it all back together again Saturday morning, you put it all back together again. That's what you do. Put it back. Absolutely. I, I say that unless you are utterly devastated uh, with with you know many towers down and stuff. I mean, we right. always hours down if we have something that we can crank it gets cranked down obviously so you're yeah. not acceptable but if you have fixed mast it's a little tough to do and um the, that that severe weather really caught us by surprise i mean we had yep. light, we had blow and horizontal rain um and it's just you know what you get on mountaintops Right. And, it, you know, from hearing from other people all around the country, it doesn't seem to matter where you live. I mean, just the end of June is just that time of year when the weather is volatile and people run into all kinds of things. So that's where, you know, being prepared ahead of time, you know, with all of the different things that you've talked about here today really makes a big difference. So that if you do have to ditch and run and then come back, at least, you know, you've got some semblance of order to work from and just begin the whole process if you have to, just like we did a few years ago with the wildfires. Robin's reminding me here in the chat, remember the wildfires when we had, you know, a 17,000 acre wildfire crop up, you know, three miles as a crow flies away from our field day site. And you just never know what's going to happen. Yeah, three miles is nothing, especially with your wind there. Right. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, (laughs) <laughs> KR1IS, as Chris is saying, 2011 field day when she was here at Sundance with us was one of her most memorable. And it sure was. That was a big fun one. We were down at the uh, fairgrounds and we had different setups and we had quite a few people from the community stop in. And I, I mentioned this in a previous Shack chat that uh, Bill N7QAX had set up a satellite station and we were trying to chase the ISS. And people were really interested in that because it's, you know, they can see and hear it all happening. I mean, nothing cooler than listening to the station and watching the antennas move as it follows it. I mean, it's, it's a great demonstration just for people who are just voice for a second. There you are. There I am. <laughs> yeah, it is. And, and it's, it's really uh, great to have, uh, that experience of showing people that, yeah, you can talk directly to the space station. Uh, I spared everybody the picture of me talking to the space station from St. Croix. Katie, right. what I'm talking about. And, uh, and Chris, great to see you here on the chat. Super. Well, Chip has mentioned a lot of uh, products um, throughout the presentation here today, radios and, <clears throat> excuse me, antennas and coax and all that. And as you mentioned, we're only a few weeks away from field day. So, you know, the weekend is here. Now's the time to dig into your boxes and your coax and radios and see what you might need and uh, order up now on the YouTube channel as well as uh, the video on YouTube, as well as here on Facebook after we're done. I'll have links for all of the products that Chip talked about. So it'll be easy for you to go click on and do a little shopping to make sure you are totally prepared for field day, right? <laughs> You bet. All right. That sounds like the perfect time to end it. (laughs) 
Well, thank you, Chip, for joining us today, K7JA from Southern California, um, sharing his field experiences. I mean, he's been doing it for lots of years and um, just uh, lots of great experience for all of us here. And let's see, I just accidentally, oh, there you are. I, I minimized you by accident. So I, everybody, if you're going to be with us next week, I've got John Crook, N9UPC from Yesu will be joining us next Friday for Shack Chat. And again, later today, keep your eyes peeled here on Facebook and YouTube. Got a new video coming out. It's very exciting. So in the meantime, everybody have a great weekend. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Ham Radio Outlet Shack Chat from my shack here. I'm Katie WI7YL and Chip K7JA73, everybody, and stay radioactive. Thank <laughs> you.